need computer training for a group or office, contact us today to get a free demo of our training at www.teachucomp.com forward slash enterprise dash licensing. In this lesson, we'll look at a few common types of resumes. Let's begin with the most common type of resume, which is the professional resume. In this context, when we refer to a professional resume, we're referring to a resume which is designed to get you a job interview. This is the type of resume which most people are familiar with and which most people have to write at some point in life. Another common type of resume is the academic resume. This type of resume is designed to get you an interview for advanced educational positions. A person might have to put together an academic resume if he or she were applying for a scholarship, a research grant, a fellowship, a graduate program, sabbatical, or even a teaching position. Academic resumes are typically more lengthy and detailed than professional resumes. When assembling an academic resume, it can be very helpful to research examples within your field of study as the appropriate specifics to include can be quite varied from field to field. A third type of resume is known as a creative resume or a non-traditional resume. When we talk about a creative resume, this can be any one of a number of things. A resume which appears online as part of a website, or an online portfolio, or even a video resume. Non-traditional resumes are best used when applying for non-traditional positions. For example, if you are a graphic designer, the quality of your visual work will be one of the first things prospective employers will want to see. So an online portfolio, blog, or website makes good sense. If you're seeking employment in a position that will require a lot of public speaking, a video resume might be a good solution for you. Simply put, creative resumes are best used within creative fields. For the rest of this course, we will be focusing mainly on professional resumes. Whichever type of resume you are writing, you also have to decide whether you're going to present your information in a chronological, functional, or mixed format. This means that when you write each section of your resume, you can choose to list your experiences from the most recent to those further back in time, or you can list your experiences in terms of their relative importance or functionality. You can also mix the two formats. While there is a lot of debate regarding whether a chronological or functional approach is more effective, the really important thing is to maintain a consistent method of listing your experiences throughout your resume, whichever method you choose. Like what you see? Get a free demo of our training for groups of five or more at www.teachucomp.com forward slash enterprise dash licensing.